I speak in the name of the risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Easter. Yeah. Happy Easter. This week I had a man come up to me as I was dressed in my priestly garb, wearing my black trousers and, and black shirt with my collar and my sport coat. He approached me in the supermarket aisle and he asked me a very simple question. He said, do you really think that you're gonna get into heaven? People ask me strange questions all the time. <laughs> So I wasn't offended, I wasn't insulted at all, uh, but the question really gave me pause. It was the middle of Holy Week, it was on Wednesday. We had just finished up our Tenebrae service, which we held here, a service of light and dark. And the last thing we did in that service was to extinguish the Paschal candle. The Paschal candle, which for us is the light of Christ. And in extinguishing it, we acknowledged that in doing so, it was really meaning Christ's death, his last breath. And so in the supermarket, my head and my heart and my soul uh, was thick with fog. And importantly, I'm not lamenting here as if the service that we participated in was uh, a funeral, because it wasn't. But it, but it made me think, what does this mean now? What does it mean now, Christ's death? What does it mean now for me and for us? And then to be approached in the supermarket and to be asked this question. My response to him was this. I don't know. I don't know. But at least right now I have hope. We smiled just a little bit, not too much. I was tired. <laughs> and we parted ways. I think this was his, his, his uh, gig, though. I think this is what he did every time he saw a clergy. He would come up to a clergy person and ask this kind of question. Interestingly, though, this is only one half of my story from that same Wednesday night. I'm going to get to the rest of it just a little bit later. Now, as a Christian, I believe that everything God gives to us is a blessing, no matter how challenging or wonderful, no matter what it is. It's a gift of opportunity, sometimes easy to see for the time, and sometimes more difficult to see relative to distance and perspective. And in this instance, this question posed by this man was a gift because it helped me in the middle of my own fog of heart, mind, and soul to remember that I indeed, that we indeed have hope. It's the realization of this hope that we recognize not only the significance of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, but what it is that it now means for us and the future of our living. This season of Holy Week and the weeks leading up to it and the months leading up to it, the whole season of Lent, mind you, it has the ability to kind of wind you up in a way where you're involved and engaged and in it it's almost as though, well, from a priest standpoint, we have blinders on. And I'm sure all of us in our lives have occasions like this where we're so occupied or preoccupied with something that it limits our vision and our sight. But priests, for me anyway, I become so caught up in the development of things that sometimes I need a reminder. I need a reminder of what we really are being called into to do and to be. I realized this probably most succinctly this weekend when we were in the parking lot for the Easter egg hunt. We had about 300 individuals in attendance. And the kids were really uh, juiced up a bit, um, <laughs> partially by the candy. <clears throat> partially by Virginia, who was encouraging them to be juiced up a bit. And the kids were chanting, um, and they were told that if they could get their chanting loud enough, they were calling out a certain bunny. If their chanting could get loud enough that the bunny would eventually emerge from his den, which is the Marco Smith building. <laughs> and so eventually the fever pitch reached uh, its point, 
and the bunny appeared. And the kids yelled and screamed and cheered. And Father Elliot said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. I'm joking, of course. He did say that, but it is, it is a joke. But I think it certainly speaks to where our heads have been and where our heads are at. A comment to say that, yes, it is certainly all about Jesus. It is certainly all about Jesus. But it's also about the people that were there, and the, it's about the people that are here now. And it's also a little bit about the bunny. It's all sort of mixed up, everything in between. It's a comment about our religiosity and our personhood and the significance of our community. This week has wound us up in a way to understand the realization of Jesus Christ and our lives in the most amazing and creative ways. Purposefully driven, challenging us to be new and different people, creative in a way that we do not fully comprehend or understand. And again, this year, just as every year, we are challenged by what God continues to put in front of us. But I have solace. I have solace knowing when I look up and out at the body of this congregation and I see the people here, the people here that love one another so much, the people here who are willing to do so much for one another, the people here that are reaching out beyond us, and in the middle of that, in the midst of challenging news and difficult situations and even celebrations, I'm reminded again and again and again that we have hope. In the midst of the other pieces of the world that seem as though they're falling apart, this place and this space is holding on to something sacred and special. And yet still a little bit unknown. And that's okay because we don't get all the answers. But that's being carried by us, carried by each and every one of us. But not just in this building, it's carried by all Christian people. All the churches right now who are saying the same creeds as we are at the same time, hearing a, hearing a variation of the same sermon but in a different place, and all of the communities that surround us, all the houses and the homes and the neighborhoods. All of it. All doing that important work. And in the midst of that, I know that Jesus is there. And I know this because Jesus has always been there. And Jesus will always be there. In a world where we can't figure things out, where we can't know everything, we can't fix everything, and certainly we cannot worry about everything. There's just too much to worry about. We can know that God is there because God has always been there. And that he is loving us and caring for us. And again, this is how I know this. So back to my story. A nice long 12 hour day, a tenebrae service, a gentleman in the bread aisle asking me if I'm gonna go to heaven. And then I'm reminded of faith and hope. As I walked out uh, to my truck that evening, I was rushed by a woman in the parking lot who saw my caller and she saw me entering the store. She had waited for me to exit the store and she rushed over to me and she said, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you to pray for me. She said, her father is dying and I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to approach this. How does this go? You're a priest, right? So we stood right there in the middle of the parking lot and we prayed. And in that parking lot, we asked God not to intercede on her behalf for what it is that she wanted or what it is that she needed, but we asked for God that his will might be done, that her father's own salvation journey might be accomplished. And we prayed for this, not because I learned this in some class somewhere. Ironically, they don't teach us these things in class. And I didn't learn this from some uh, wise sage of wisdom and experience. that You don't really get that from this. I, 
we prayed that way because that moment, in that moment, we remembered in the midst of everything else, the only thing that we had together was hope. And I think that's where we are today. Jesus Christ is risen. And walking through a doorway, we have a new hope for a new Christ and a new world. And a new way of being that we never ever thought possible. And through the inspiration of that hope, we continue to reach out. And in doing so, we love one another. We build one another up. We support one another the best way and sometimes the only ways that we know how. And if you're sitting in this congregation today and you're intrigued by this way of living, this way of being, you should come here and see what it's all about. My brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.